once you've got all those units in place, we can award you with the experienced worker qualification, but you also need to take the AM2, which is the achievement measurement test. For those that have done a full apprenticeship, you'll be fully aware that at the end of it, you've got the endpoint assessment where you've got a, a board where you've got to put some containment on, you've got to put a few circuits on there, different types of wiring systems, then do the full inspection and test of it to the required standard. You do need to still complete that. The AM2 is something that we at Develop do not offer. That is run by Net Certification, is that one, Net Services. They do have centres up and down the UK, and it's just a case of find your nearest centre, complete it. Once you've achieved your experience worker qualification and got your AM2E, brilliant. Then you can apply for your ECS Gold Card. Sounds quite simple in theory, doesn't it? But sometimes it isn't. So cost structure, because everybody wants to know about the price, don't they? Payment instructions for our finance team. So once we've verified that you are occupationally competent, ready to start and ready to complete the qualification, you've got all the relevant background, you're working in the industry, then we can discuss costs, payment options and timescales. The cost, it is a standard cost fee, uh, which we'll get to in a second. We do offer payment options for that as well, so it's not necessarily all at once, but we can't obviously accept you onto the system until payment's been received. Time scales, all being well, once you, have, once you submit all the relevant documentation, we should be able to have that professional discussion with you to see if you're eligible, usually within about two to three weeks at the most. And then providing you are, it's just waiting for payment and then time scales. Time scales, so how long does it take for somebody to complete this route? That is a question that is impossible to answer, to be honest. It is completely down to the individual concerned. We can have some people on the scheme who they see it as soon as they've got this qualification and got their ECS gold card, that is a significant pay rise for them and it opens up so many more job opportunities. Because of that, some people want to get this qualification as soon as they can. They will put the effort in, they will put in maybe an hour each night once they finish work, gather the evidence, submit the evidence, do write-ups on jobs they've done, and they could be fully complete and competent within, within possibly three to six months, which is fantastic. And then we get some people who are maybe a bit more lethargic, maybe not as quick at doing the computer work, or they've got other personal time commitments. They've got families that need time. So because of that, it could take them people maybe 18 months. What we're looking at is for people not to drag this out, obviously. It's in your benefit to get this done as soon as you can. So we do try and hurry people along. Not to the point of hurrying them up for the sake of it, but the more people um, effort people put into this, the more they get out of it and the quicker they get their competency paperwork. So the cost structure then. Initially, they held the skill scan, background check, profiling check, professional discussion, etc. That doesn't cost anything. It doesn't cost anything whatsoever to inquire and see if you're eligible and see if it's a pathway you want to go down. Once you've been accepted on the system, the cost £1,500, and that, as it says, is mandatory for all learners. And that includes all your portfolio. It's all worked on an e-portfolio, which is Sitting Guilds Learning Assistant, includes all the registration, certification fees. And within that, we've got two site visits as well, where John, our assessor, will come out and visit you midterm, somewhere during the midterm of the actual programme and do a on-site evidence gathering exercise. And then he'll do a final assessment towards the end of the programme, where he'll do that site visit, physically watch you, talk to you, discuss things, etc. And that's all included in there. The additional courses that you do need, if you've already got these courses, fantastic. You don't need to retake them. If you've already got your wiring regulations, and your singles 2391, all you need to do is upload the certificates where the, them units will get signed off. 
If you don't have them, you do need to take them sometime during the programme before we can sign those units off. Whether you do at the beginning, middle, at the end, is totally up to you guys. It really is. Obviously, we'd like you to do those qualifications with us, and that's absolutely fine. We do have centres up and down the country. We've got centres in Swindon, Derby, York, Scotland. So that's absolutely fine. But if our centres or dates don't fit with your timescales, not a problem. Go get the qualifications at another independent provider and just give us the certificate at the end of it. That's all we need. If anybody does need any additional support, those are obviously chargeable because the Sitting Guild's guidelines for the qualification is two site visits is adequate. So the fees on there, but again, they may be required, they may not, totally down to the personality. And then your AM2E. Like I said, we do not offer that, and it needs to be completed anywhere at one of the other net services centres. And as it says, costs can vary from centre to centre, and they do, but it's roughly around about £700. If you go to the bigger areas, London, Bristol, etc., the costs seem to be a bit more expensive. It could be up to about £900. Um, but that is up to them. We've got no control over that and we don't offer that one. So that's a little bit about the actual cost basing and what you'd expect financially through the programme. We do also cater for people who have any additional support needs, whether it's learning needs, mobility needs, etc. We can deal with that. If you do have any additional support needs that you want to discuss, please let us know. Feel free to discuss it with, with John when you have your professional discussion. On the actual application form, there's sections in there where you can write in any information that you may want us to help with. So we can do that, that's not a problem. Everybody should have the opportunity to jump on this programme if they meet the background, irrespective of any additional needs. So obviously that'll be handled sensitively with discretion but please let us know if we don't know about it there's nothing we can do to help so what we've got is a performance logbook um some people may be familiar with these they may not traditionally these were all paper-based it would have been a paper-based booklet maybe 200 pages in it where you fill in all the details as you're going through as technology has advanced it's all electronic now we can supply a paper copy just for your reference, should you want it, because some people still like to look through and tick off mm -hmm. things on paper, but it is all electronically done via the Sitting Guild's Learning Assistant portal, which I personally find quite easy, because you look at the performance unit, it's unit 103, for example, terminating cables, and it gives you examples which you have to upload against to prove you've met that criteria. And then it's just upload a photograph of you doing the task, write a small description. In this photograph, I was doing X, Y, and Z. The reasons why you're doing it, the reasons why you did it a particular way, and submit it. Then that goes to John Owens, our assessor, to say, yes, the evidence submitted meets the standard. Or if it doesn't, he'll refer it back to you saying, you've uploaded a photograph, but there's no description to explain what you're doing or why you're doing it. The easiest way, to be honest, is a video. So if you get one of your work colleagues to do a little video recording of you doing a task, and then you just talk over the video, why are you doing it? That is the easiest way. The structure is based up into these sections here. So we've got, it goes through the expert witness. So if you're doing a task on site and you need somebody to verify and witness you doing it, that's where the expert witness is. That is somebody who also has to be technically competent. And if you do use an expert witness on site, which I'm sure you all will do at some stage, what we need to do to verify it from our side is we will need to speak to the expert witness, get their qualifications, get their justification for why they're competent, because they are the evidence gatherer. And then we've got the logbook candidate guide. Then we've got the initial one or two units, which is health and safety, environmental considerations. So health and safety considerations. When you're doing a task, what do you need? Do you need certain items of PPE? Do you need to consider ladder safety, working at heights, environmental conditions? 
this is all the initial evidence that you need to gather for risk assessments, method statements, evidence of you complying with it on site. Then elements for organising and overseeing electrical work environment. Do you order materials? Do you coordinate with the members of staff? Do you plan timescales in? Terminating and connecting conductors. So how would you terminate a conductor? Do you use the right torque setting on circuit breakers, which hopefully you will do. And you can obviously see how the element goes on. And then it goes all the way through to fault diagnosis, rectification, and then there's appendices in the actual workbook itself. Like I say, we can send a paper copy of the workbook out, but all evidence has to be submitted electronically. So the structure of the delivery, again, this is something I've already gone through, but it's just often easier to see it in black and white. So the applicant completes skill scan, all the background data collection forms. The assessor, John, completes the um, professional discussion where he also drills into your experience, drills into your history in a lot more detail, confirms eligibility and the additional support, do all the paperwork, any qualifications you've already got, mandatory modules and the costing. Then that's brilliant. Pay up and you're on the system. So we'll register all the learners. Initially, we used to do it on the first of each month to keep them in batches, but now we just register people as they come on because it's so much easier and it's better on your time scales. So then what we'll do is send out the invites, log you on to Learning Assistant. That is time sensitive is the log on to Learning Assistant. So when you get the email saying the account's been created, you do only have 48 hours. So if you miss that 48 hour window, it's not a problem, just let us know, we'll reset it and we can start again. And then we go through initially, you'll have an initial welcome with John where we'll speak to you, talk about the actual evidence, the evidence gathering procedure, and try and co coach you through the first few parts that you need to fill in. That's not a problem. Telephone mm -hmm. support as much as you need. And then obviously we'll go through the workshops where we'll do this online side, just what I've talked about. Site visit, first site visit will try and again capture as much evidence as possible. You'd be surprised if you were busy doing a, a larger job on site, how much evidence we can capture from that one site visit against the performance units. And then second workplace assessment, again, capture the final parts of any performance units needed. And then we'll sign off the 2346 and then all you need is your AM2E. So I said, learning assistant ePortfolio records all our evidence. There is plenty of online tutorial videos on that, on, on YouTube, et cetera, that City and Gills have produced and published. So I would suggest anybody coming onto the scheme, just quickly put in City and Gills learning assistant into YouTube, and there's plenty of videos. There's even videos on the City and Gills website on how to use it. But if you do need any support on how to use it, not a problem. Speak to John. He's the expert on it. We'll talk you through it all. I say all evidence is stored electronically. So the AM2 or the AM2E. The AM2, the AM2E and the AM2S are all different units. And it depends on your previous background. Some people may have done the AM2 up to a certain date. If that's the case, then you may only need to do the shortened version of the AM2S just to capture the element. Or if you've done it after a certain date, you may only need to do a top-up element. That is totally dependent on the dates and which version of the AM2 you hold. But essentially it covers safe isolation risk assessment part. They allow you 45 minutes for that. Composite installation, they allow you 10 hours for that. So it is spread over two days is the AM2. And then the inspection and testing. So you spent 10 hours doing the install to the specification and standards they give you at the assessment centre. Then you allow three and a half hours to do the initial inspection, testing, certification, all the paperwork. Safe isolation of circuits. They allow another 30 minutes to demonstrate you can isolate, secure isolation safely. Fault diagnosis and rectification, an additional two hour assessment on that. And the assessment of applied knowledge takes another further hour. So that is quite a 
substantial chunk. It's a full two days in the assessment centre. And unfortunately, you can't get any information beforehand on what they're going to get you to do on the composite installation due to data security and plagiarism. This is a short little video on the AM2E, which has been created by Net Services. If you take the experienced worker assessment, you'll need to pass the AM2E test before you can complete the whole assessment process. What's the AM2E? It's an in-depth assessment where you have to carry out specific tasks to demonstrate your electrical competence. The whole test is broken down into different sections, such as installation, fault finding, safe isolation, and inspection and testing. Strict exam conditions are in place during the assessment, so this means no electronic devices or getting help from anyone else. You'll be monitored by an assessor who will be marking your work as the day progresses. You won't be able to take your AM2E until you've achieved the experienced work qualification. After this, you can use our self-assessment checklist to work through everything you need to do. Use it to make sure you're comfortable with all areas of the test so you're fully prepared before you attend. Once you pass the AM2E, you've completed the Experienced Worker Assessment. The Experienced Worker Qualification plus the AM2E is accepted for an ECS Gold Card application and is recognised by the Electrotechnical Assessment Specification as equivalent to an industry apprenticeship. The NET website gives you much more information on the AM2E and each section in detail, how to best prepare and what happens during the assessment. Visit www.netservices.org.uk slash AM2E to find out more. So that's a little bit of information on that. So the online tutorial session with each learner then. Once again, the learner has been accepted onto the system and everything's gone through, you will be contacted individually within three weeks. And that's when John will do this professional discussion with you and then give you an hour, a couple of hours of his time, talking you through the system, talking you through the scheme in more detail, how to do the evidence and the details specifics of each part of the evidence. So we get it right first time. So upon enrolment to the scheme, so you've been signed up to the scheme, we'll give you plenty of familiarity with the logbook, performance criteria, what you guys need to do or girls need to do for that. Start gathering copies of risk assessments, method statements, because they are the first units and the easiest units to be signed off is the applied health and safety. If you don't already have them, start thinking ahead about preparing, booking, completing your 18th edition and inspection and testing. Like I say, you don't technically need them until you come, come to the end of the experienced worker assessment route. But if you can get them done sooner, it's going to help your career. And start thinking about who can you use as an expert witness. Do you have a colleague you work with who's a fully qualified electrician? He may be suitable for your expert witness, your employer. There's plenty of different options there. So your expert witnesses. Like I said, they do need to hold, sorry, they don't need to hold an assessor qualifications at all. John Owens, obviously, in all our assessors, we've, we're formally qualified as assessors to make that formal decision, whereas your expert witness doesn't need to be. He just needs to have the evidence and some formal qualifications to prove he's technically competent within the field that he's providing the witness statement for. So they need to be able to demonstrate they've got relevant current knowledge of industry working practices, techniques, no conflict of interest, which is something that will get asked. If they're potentially going to give a bit of conflict of interest, father and son outfit, for example, and the father's signing off all his son's work as expert witnesses, conflict of interest, not acceptable. And that gentleman... It's the end of the short presentation. I will throw it open to you guys for any questions. Um, I've not looked in the chat box yet, deliberately, because a lot of the questions will possibly already have been answered anyway. So we'd like to go through the questions at the end. So I'll stop sharing my screen 
and see if we've got any questions popped up. I can't see any questions popped up yet. That has surprised me. Usually we get a raft of questions on these items. Usually we get plenty. But all I can say is that must mean I've done a good job of exp explaining it all. Unless anybody's got any questions, ladies and gents, I think we'll call it a day at that. Um, thank you very much for your time. I really hope it's been informative. If there is any more. And we've got one. Doo -doo -doo -doo. One from Gordon. Yes, it does apply in Scotland. It is a nationwide UK based qualification. And if someone's got a level three service and maintenance NVQ, would they be accepted? That's something that possibly, yes. Again, it depends on the rest of your work history and your time within the industry. The easiest way to do that would be to fill in. That's just contact our email address. It's jtlinquiries at developtraining.co.uk. Or if you go to the developtraining.co.uk website, it appears on there. Just have a quick search for it there. And then you'll be able to see all the information that you need. Um, like I say, it doesn't cost anything to do the inquiry. <coughs> so it doesn't cost anything to do the inquiry. And then we'll look into more specific details then rather than discussing every individual's personal circumstances at the time. And another question, been working in the industry 23 years, has the AM2 in 1996, is this still valid? What I'm going to do is pass this one across to John Owens to answer, because yes, it does still have some validity, but you may need to do top-up units due to the age of it and how the AM2 has evolved over the years. So can you jump on that one, John? Yeah, no problem at all. Uh, the old AM2, that's when you had to do pyro and uh, things like that. So uh, you'll have to uh, top up uh, with that one with safe isolation and uh, you'll have to do a full inspection and testing within the AM2E. So it's a relatively short top up. Is that a, a one day one? Uh, yeah, because you've got three and a half hours and uh, and half an hour for the risk assessment and safe isolation. So it's yeah. a day. Which obviously is going to be a lot less price than the the full AM2E. Yeah, all the units, if you ring up the centres, all the units have all the modules all broken down price-wise separately. Right. So if you fail one particular module, you just go back and reset that module. Rather than to have to redo the whole two days of torture again. Yeah, that's correct. I've never I've never called it the two days of torture, but I I know some some people I've spoken to have done the AM2. I've called it the two days of torture. It's normally over three days now. Over three days again. Yeah. It's not a good thing. Um <laughs> gone, thanks for your comment. Um, I apologise for not addressing that because obviously it does change depending where we are locally within the UK. Do you have any more questions? Right then, ladies and gents, I will leave it at that then. Um, I say I'll hang on with this with on with John for the next five minutes in case Henry does pop an, pop anything up. But apart from that, thank you very much for your time and enjoy the weekend. And yes, we will send out the presentation, so it's not a problem with that. Um, we've also got all your login details, so we'll get a copy. We'll send it straight out automatically. I'll get our marketing team to do that. Um, it may possibly be Tuesday, because obviously Friday afternoon, people slow down for the weekend and bank holiday on Monday. So yes, we will get it out to you, not a problem gone.
Uh, we've just got one person left. Um, I'll just quickly double check, Ron. Do you have any questions you want to pose to us now? And now you're the only person, or you just not click the exit button? Not a problem if you've got a little question, so. No, no response, so we'll leave it at that. Thank you very much. Good weekend. Bye-bye. Right, I've kicked one out of the presentation. Oh, okay. Done. Right. Okay. Well, well done. <laughs> um,